What's going on YouTube? This is Dre the Plug coming at you guys with some more technical heat. Definitely hit that subscribe button below, hit that bell so y'all can stay notified every single time I drop new technical heat. Okay, so in this video, I'm basically gonna show you guys how to actually use a servo in your project, just how it works, how it's coded, how to make it move and shift from left to right. A lot of people messaged me and was showing me basically how people was making projects of how to hover your hand over like a nozzle, over like hand sanitizer, over soap, and the soap will instantly just, you know, move down based on the servo, and then you won't even have to touch the nozzle, so that way you can stay clean and be safe, especially with the virus going around. So basically, I'm gonna show people how to use this, how to make a servo shift, how to code it and make it shift, and I'm gonna actually throw into an ultrasonic sensor, which is the reason why people are not touching it, and they're able to just hover over it and instantly make like basically any electronic turn on and move and activate stuff without even touching it. Let's get into the video, man. Let's get into some more of this technical heat. All right, man, so this is basically what I'm gonna use. Just use your typical Arduino, of course. I'm gonna use your ultrasonic sensor and your servo, and I'm gonna basically tie them together to once this one feels anything within a certain range, It'll basically activate this to shift and then basically act as a switch and turn something on and off. Let's get into it. Let's get into some more of this technical heat. I'm about to break down the construction process so it's not too confusing for you guys. Then I'm going to break down the code. The code is actually key because I looked at a lot of code and examples on YouTube and it's so, so confusing. But I'm going to, of course, go down and break it down to you guys to just make it seem so much more easier. Let's get into it. Let's get into some of this technical heat. Okay, so as you guys can see, I just showed you guys the construction work of both the sensor and the servo motor. So basically, right now, it is not going off the servo motor. It's not moving whatsoever. But if I put my hand right over it, the way I coded it was between 30 centimeters. So anything within that range, the servo motor will instantly shift in the specific speed that I coded it to. So let me actually show you guys that demonstration real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna hover my hand over the ultrasonic sensor and instantly, once I hover it over it, it'll activate the servo and make it shift. So let me just show you guys, I'm gonna just hover over it real quick and the range is between zero and 30 centimeters. So within that range, once it senses that something is in that range, it'll activate the servo. So let me just show, show you guys. And there you go. And that's basically how the hand sanitizer, the soap, all of that stuff was pretty much turning on and off by itself, just based on these two little electronics. Then as soon as I move it, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so jumping into the code. So something that will help you guys understand this code a hundred times more is if you go back to my video and you actually look up how to use an ultrasonic sensor and then come to this one, you will see it's only a few things that I added to it. But with the ultrasonic sensor and the servo motor being combined, it may be a little bit confusing, but I'm gonna still just go through the whole code, still go through everything just so you guys can understand. So I like to individually connect components first and then code them to basically connect to each other. So I'm looking at it right now and from somebody who know exactly how an ultrasonic sensor is coded, who knows how a servo motor will be coded. I could easily see like where each one has its own designated code. So like right here, this is your ultrasonic sensor right here. This is also your ultrasonic sensor right here. And then uh, this whole thing right here is your ultrasonic sensor. And then all of this, everything else that wasn't highlighted is pretty much your servo motor. So this right here is pretty much your servo motor code right here, right here, right here. And then of course, right here. So let me just still, I'm gonna still just go in and explain it. You guys could follow along and I'll basically break it down still. So jumping into it in the beginning, I have my int servo.h. So you're gonna need this particular like library in order to run a servo in general. So then you have servo, servo, semicolon, then I have angle eight. So specifically, 
this will be the pin for your signal for your servo motor. You can pick whichever number, like how I say in all my videos, you can pick whichever port, but I just so happen to just pick eight. So then jump into your trigger pin and your echo pin for the ultrasonic sensor how I was showing before. And the construction work, I used nine and 10. I could have used any other number between those or any number on the board still. I just so happen to just pick a nine and 10. So you don't have to use those two, like how I always mention. Then go into my voice that if I have servo dot attached, then I have eight, right? Because eight is above. They gotta be in sync. Then I have the same thing, servo dot right angle. Same thing above, same exact thing, so they could be in sync. Then I have my serial begin, pin mode, because I need power to come out of the trigger. I need power to come out of the echo pin. I don't necessarily have to worry about it when it comes down to the servo, because it's already kind of set in place with this library right here. So the power to come out or the power to generate for the servo to turn on, is kind of set in place for this like library right here. So then for my trigger pin, I'm gonna output like a signal on one of the little circles as you've seen on the ultrasonic sensor. It sounds gonna go out and then when it touches or if it hits anything, it's gonna bounce right back into the echo circle and basically gonna to capture all of that. That's why this one is output, this one is input. So it's gonna shoot out signal, then it's gonna come back. So going down, I have my void loop. All of this is basically calculations for my ultrasonic sensor right here. So that way I can see everything in centimeters for each individual range when I actually turn it on so I can see everything. Like I mentioned, if this is confusing for you, definitely go look at my ultrasonic sensor video that I have, but this is pretty much it. And then from here, this is for my server. I put if the distance, right? All of this basically sums up to just distance. If this distance have less than a range of 30, right? So between 30 centimeters all the way to zero, um, if anything is inside that area, it'll instantly shift the servo, instantly turn on the servo, instantly activate that servo. So that's pretty much it. Like if I wanted to change this to a hundred centimeters, I could do that. If I want to change it to just five or 10 centimeters, I can do that. So then right after that, I have my four angle and I have this equal to 10. I have angle plus then I get to 200 and I have angle plus plus. So as far as for my angle, right, it just pretty much let me know or just let pretty much resets to let everything be set in place. Like it could have been like um, 10 is basically just like an angle I want it to be at. Like when it's set in place, when I first turn on the servo to make it just be straight up. But when it actually cranks and turns, that's like a good set spot. Then right here I have angle that I want it to be either less than like 200 so it actually like tickers and tickers and tickers based on a degree so basically it'll go from zero to all the way up until either 180 or 200 degrees or a little bit more than like 180 just to be safe so i just put 200 and it'll basically shift in that direction and then it'll go one by one like really really slow that's why you have plus plus if i put negative negative it will basically start the opposite way and it could take backwards the same exact way instead of going down and moving the servo it'll go the opposite way and shift up especially if you also move the degree to the opposite of 180 if it was at zero then it'll be the opposite way and it will basically tick up really fast and come back down but i didn't want that i wanted it to basically shift down so that way it could activate like how i mentioned before with the different type of examples for the servo motor then i have servo dot right angles then i have delay 10 so this is pretty much the whole entire code you guys could just copy and paste it and use it for any type of project use it for all of those different examples i just gave and that concludes the code and that concludes this video don't forget to comment like and subscribe it really do help my channel when it comes down to the youtube algorithm if you guys have any questions regarding anything just hit me up on instagram hit me up on the gram at Dre the Plug, one, two, three. And then also go check out my other YouTube channel. This is actually my second channel. My first one was called Andre Classic Cuts. I basically go in and give tutorials about all types of different haircuts. I actually show people how to do different type of things with the clippers that has never been done. And I pretty much go into detail as to why certain things happen. So definitely go check out that channel. Besides that, be on the lookout for my next 
content that's dropping. Be on the lookout for it because it's coming real soon. And I'm out. <laughs>